Welcome once again to our weekly teachings. For this week, there's a very important teaching and depicts the life, the price that Jesus paid for all of us, not just for our Christians, but most of all for those that don't know him as the Lord and Savior. I mean, prayers we continue on in the teachings that will be a blessing to you. And please, this special Passion Week, let's display the life of Christ. Jesus before Pilate, in verse 11. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they're bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom of the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who's called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him! Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It's your responsibility. All the people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. We see that the only time Jesus speaks in Matthew is to affirm Pilate, asking, Are you king of the Jews? However, the Gospel of John expands the conversation before Jesus admits to being a king, that we see in John 18, 33-37, where it says, Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others tell to you? Did others talk to you about him? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you've done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You're a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You said that I am a king? In fact, the reason I was born and king into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. And in John 19, verse 11, Jesus says, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. Pilate offers the people a choice of who to release. Jesus Barabbas, meaning Jesus, son of the father, who is an insurrectionist, or Jesus, son of the father, but notwithstanding the warning from his wife, Pilate allows Barabbas to be released. John 19, 12 says, From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you're no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. Worried about the claims of allowing an opponent of Caesar to go unpunished, which could bring about Pilate's downfall, Pilate relented and gave Jesus up for crucifixion. It should be noted that those calling for Jesus' execution were influenced by the chief priests and elders and would probably have been largely composed of temple workers. John's use of the phrase the Jews was indicative of the chief priests and elders, not the Jewish people as a whole. The stain of referring to the Jews as a nation of Christ killers is totally unfounded. Pilate then has Jesus flogged before releasing him for crucifixion. The flogging severely injured the recipient. The whip used had pieces of bone tied into it that would rip the flesh open. The Crucifixion Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. 
They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They had put a staff in his right hand, then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene. Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. Crucifixion was designed to be a cruel and humiliating punishment. Prisoners normally carried a, only the crossbeam to the execution site. Death was normally by suffocation, as pressure on the body prevented the person being able to breathe. Crosses could take on many shapes, as the Romans often improvised. However, we know that Jesus' cross was high, as the staff was needed to raise the sponge to his lips, and it was probably the traditional cross, as the titulus or inscription of the charged crime was placed over his head. Jesus cry here, Eli Elias Lamak Sabachthani, is from Psalm 22, which taken as a whole is prophetic about the crucifixion. And then of course is Isaiah 53 that says, Surely he took our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. John 19 and 30 records Jesus' words as, it is finished. Which is also a phrase that means the debt has been paid in full. The ultimate price for sin had been paid. Matthew tells us that the temple veil is torn in two. Man has access to God. No longer is access restricted to the high priest. Reading on in that evening, verse 57 of chapter 27 of Matthew. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, 
and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he's been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go and make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, he is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Joseph of Arimathea claims the body and buries it in his tomb, fulfilling prophecy. But with the male disciples still absent, the women of the New Testament take precedence in the burial and resurrection stories, observing Jesus buried and going to the grave on Sunday morning. Women were considered unreliable witnesses in Jewish and Roman culture, so even in death Jesus was challenging the established order of things. The officials bribed the guards to say the body was stolen. If they were Roman guards, they could have been put to death for sleeping on duty. In requesting the guard for the tomb, the Jewish leaders described Pilate as Lord and Jesus as an imposter. The religious people have things the wrong way around. The most important words in history are found in Matthew 28, 6. He is not here. He has risen. He who laid down his life has taken it up again. Jesus goes on to appear to the disciples. Matthew only focuses on the Galilee appearance when he gives them the Great Commission. The disciples that we last saw running away on Jesus' arrest become changed men. Peter, who denied Jesus time, who denied Jesus three times, is given the chance to affirm his love for Jesus three times and becomes the rock that Jesus had prophesied. Thomas, who says, Unless I see with my own eyes and feel with my own hands, I will not believe, retorts, my Lord and my God in John 20, 28. Jesus then gives a word through time to us in verse 29, when Jesus says to Thomas, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And what then about Judas? If he had not killed himself, would he have been restored by Jesus? The answer is undoubtedly yes. 
Jews, Judas had sinned, and so had everyone and us. And for Paul tells us, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God in Romans 3.23. Judas could have been saved if he had lived and repented and called on the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what we've done in our past. Jesus can save us. Romans 4.25 says, He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. And so this Easter, open your heart to Jesus and accept him as Lord and Saviour of your life. If you don't know Jesus today, then why don't you accept him and pray this prayer along with us? Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sins and the life that I've lived. I need your forgiveness. I believe that your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary and died for my sins. And I am now willing to turn from my sin. You said in the Bible that if we confess the Lord our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. Right now I confess Jesus as my Lord. With my heart I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. This very moment I accept Jesus Christ as my own personal Saviour. And according to his word, right now I am saved. Amen. Amen. And if you've prayed that prayer, then you've now in the kingdom of God. And you have eternal life through Jesus Christ. So um, if you did pray that prayer, then send us a message on our Facebook page or through uh, YouTube. And um, join up with a, a church that can continue to develop you and discipleship you so you can learn the things of God. And uh, also in uh, becoming a follower of our Facebook page, you'll continue to uh, have future teachings available to you. And we just thank God for you. This Easter is a great time for celebration. Yes, Good Friday was a time of mourning. But uh, as the word says, joy comes in the morning after a time of mourning. And the morning is Easter Sunday and the resurrection when everything that Jesus said that he would do, he did. And we have salvation through Jesus Christ. May you be blessed reading the word and hearing the word. Amen. Amen. And I want to add that, yes, it is a glorious and memorial time for believers, but most of all, the sinners. We were all sinners at one time. But the price that Jesus paid for us today in this, this specific time is a good time to even rededicate our lives back to him and be thankful and say, Father God, I thank you that I am mindful of the price that was paid for me. From today on, continue to renew my faith and strengthen my unbelief. And we say thank you, Father, for everything. For making a way where Jesus is the way. He is the only way. He is the truth and the life. And because he lives, we can live also. Happy, blessed Easter. Happy Resurrection. Amen. Sunday. Amen. Amen. Love you all, but God loves you best of all. And he demonstrated that when Jesus paid the price. Be blessed. We'll keep in touch. And may the Spirit of God continue to minister to you and help you to restore and refresh you this resurrection season. Amen.